I'm trying to figure out what is different about sex work. Why do we apply this rhetoric um, to sex work and not to other forms of work? Oh, you want someone to tell you why? By all means, we the Shades Podcast will certainly do that. Let's get right into it. Hello, everybody. This is the Shades Podcast, where we expose our cultural dark frames of our modern times in order for us to see into the light. Now, the cultural dark frame of today is the notion that objective morality does not exist. It comes from within yourself. So therefore, Ray, you cannot go ahead and judge my line of work, sex work, prostitution, pornography, etc., etc. That is the cultural dark frame of today. So we will go ahead and combat that so our viewers may see into the light. Okay. Now, Jasmine Jafar and uh, lots of people who are like yourself, y'all said something that's pretty interesting, very interesting for that matter. See it for yourself. Where do we get our morality from? Um, some people have a belief in an objective morality. They think that's the only way it makes sense. Somebody has to come tell us what's right or wrong and it has to be set in stone. And so then the question is, well, Who's going to determine that? So for a lot of people, this involves God, higher power, some deity that is going to be the end all be all on what is good and what is bad. And we are put here to obey and to follow these rules. This is kind of intellectually restricting in a lot of ways. It's an appeal to an authority. And more importantly, a lot of people don't believe in your particular ideology. I mean, there's, there's many of them or your particular God or whatever type of religion or scripture you follow. And a lot of people don't think that there is anybody or any type of higher power deity that has given us our moral principles and that we should abide by them. So for those people, and I would consider myself part of that group, uh, morality is something that needs to be debated, reasoned, questioned, and based on humanist principles. Okay, guys, hopefully even you can understand uh what she is saying is clearly wrong. It's uh, incoherent, unfortunately, mm -hmm. but she doesn't want to accept it. I want to just go ahead and say this really quickly, because for me to try to explain why we need God as a standard of objective morality is going to take a whole nother episode, right? I can't just simply concise that within five minutes because people are going to ask so many other questions regarding what I just said. But to put it simply, if morality is subjective, if morality is only derived from within ourselves, and she says that she takes a humanist approach to morality, even that in of itself is subjective. Why should I care about human flourishing? I think I should only care about myself. I could care less about my next door neighbor. It doesn't matter, Ray, if I decide to go ahead and slap someone across the face or even worse yet, R word someone, um, I don't care about their well-being. I only care about myself. I mean, I am biologically uh, predetermined already to do certain actions because there's no such thing as, as free will in the atheistic worldview. So you're going to go ahead and judge me where my biological wiring and my brain fizz that is running through me is going to go ahead and make me R-word someone, make me kill someone. Why is that wrong? You're going to go ahead and judge my biological wiring. Mm -hmm. You're going to go ahead and judge uh, Mussolini's biological wiring, but you're going to say okay to Mother Teresa? No, it's unfair according to the atheistic worldview. It should be unfair. But for them, um, our beloved atheists and feminists alike, Jasmine Far, Jasmine Jafar, I don't, I really don't even know why I'm trying to correct her last name. I could care less. They want to say, this is wrong. This is bad. Okay. So you know that certain things are wrong and bad. So then therefore there is such thing as an objective morality, which can only come from God. Because if it comes from us, from society, then lots, lots of horrible consequences can come from that. Again, this whole objective issue and uh, when it comes to morality it requires a whole nother episode so we can concisely and take our time to explain to our audience why we need god for an objective standard why we need god for morality yeah All right so at the beginning of the clip 
and her side. She states that some people derive their morality from themselves, and then some derive their morality from the God um, or a deity, you know, the correct way. Right. So when we derive our value from oneself, then anything can go. I mean, it's a slippery slope. It's very subjective. I don't know how she can, you know, pull stats and maybe her logic, logical reasoning into thinking that that is morally correct just because of my correct points. So, and this argument is brought up a lot from the other side and for people that are, you know, perverse and stuff like that, they say that um, Christians and Catholics or whatever religion you are, you know, you guys are kind of forcing religion onto people. You can't force religion onto people to get people to have the same or a, a congruent I- ideology to you. So we're not forcing anybody to be religious. We're saying that this is the better way of life. And when you when you aren't religious and you don't look up to that God, then your life is basically meaningless. I mean, you have no purpose in life because now you value selfish things that will deteriorate deteriorate over time. So, and then the next point from her uh, video, she says that morality must be debated for the people that do not believe in a higher being. Okay, so if that's the case, then what if someone articulates a horrendous act better than you can? But of course, as a society, we understand that that other side may be incorrect. So what happens if someone articulates that a lot better? What happens if someone articulates um, bestiality a lot better, Mm -hmm. which is very weird? What if someone articulates um, incest mm-hmm. or or rape right. in, in our culture? Mm-hmm. Does that mean that that is morally correct because they can, I don't know, bring up stats or what makes right. people happier uh-huh. or they have more logical reasoning and, and more examples for their argument? Does that make it morally correct just because they win the debate? No. No. No, not at all. No, not at all. And it's so weird, too, because she says, I take a humanist approach. The humanist approach is... Um, making sure that we as a species flourish with one another. So therefore you cannot harm uh, me and I cannot harm you. So again, what does that word harming mean? What does flourishing mean? What if I think that human flourishing is all about me? And then somebody say, well, then you're just going to go ahead and be put off to the side. Okay, cool. I'll just simply be looked at as a taboo. Um, this doesn't just come from you and I, right? This comes from our very prominent philosophers, Christian apologists. Dr. William Lane Craig said that, Morality for the atheistic worldview is simply looking at certain actions that are deemed unpermissible as taboo. It should be viewed that way. Um, Let's say, for example, if I yell at a very fine dining uh, place and people, they look, would they call me immoral? No, they'll say that's weird. That's incorrect, right? Uh, That's improper. You shouldn't do that. It'll be the same logic would apply if someone were to R word somebody. Oh, it's a taboo because I can't necessarily I can't necessarily say that it's wrong. It's taboo. You shouldn't do that, man. Stop. Or because you know you are going to be put off to the side. You know you'll go to jail. You'll go to prison. But nonetheless, everything gets subjective. Uh, everything must be debated. I'm literally going to go ahead and sit in front of you and debate you on why you shouldn't R word somebody, Jasmine Jafar. Come on, give me a break, please. Mm-mm. You see, and then it shows the absurdity of the atheistic worldview that everything must be debated. Uh, a 15 year old having sex, just as you stated, whenever we would talk about this stuff, who can have sex with a man that's 45 years old, who on earth is really going to say, you know what, I think that that's okay? And then somebody say, no, I think that's uh, wrong. All right, let's debate about it. No. There should be no debate on whether or not if a grown man should have sex with a 15-year-old. There should be no debate on whether or not if slavery was okay. But people can literally have the audacity and say, no, there is no such thing as objective morality. It should be debated. It should be reason. What? Wow. The absurdity of the atheistic worldview such as, or at least for your worldview, Jasmine, so far now you know it's very funny because whenever the atheists see this immediately they're gonna you know we're ready for it we're ready for it uh, again you cannot say what i said was wrong or incoherent because what's wrong about being incoherent there's nothing wrong about that at all in the end we're all gonna die it's meaningless it doesn't matter right, right. anyway so that's just the first <laughs> that's the first part of what uh, she is saying now then she starts to delve into another segment that gets even more interesting, Ray. I mean, this is just, it gets worse and worse. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, yeah. Let's, let's go ahead and roll into the next clip, y'all. Let's say it is bad for you. There are a lot of jobs that people are unhappy doing or aren't have some negative impact to their mental or physical health. I mean, like, okay, I, I'm a lawyer. Lawyers are very unhappy too. <laughs> like a lot of them are unhappy with their job. They have very high rates of substance abuse issues. I think like sex workers do, um, depression, suicide, all this, but nobody is like, you know what? You being a lawyer is really sad and we should come save you. And it's really immoral to support people being lawyers because lawyers deal with, it. I mean, I think Mia Khalifa recently um, said this and people agreed or disagreed where they're like, she's like, well, I mean, isn't the military, like, aren't you literally selling your body to like the government and you could die? Um, yeah, right. Uh, pretty weird how she would try to compare certain jobs to sex work. Yeah. So she even quotes Mia Khalifa, which is, she's a, she's really the star of Shades, to be honest. We've used on thumbnails. <laughs> We've talked about her in numerous podcasts. She I mean, is. she's just, she's a legend, bro, I guess. But, um, <laughs> She tries to compare sex work to what was, what was Mia Khalifa talking about? Um, like people going into the military, the military. And, and things like that. Yes. So the distinction between those two is that OnlyFans and sex work has no purpose in our society. No purpose. No purpose besides the OnlyFans girl or OnlyFans guy receiving money for the transactional um, job that they are participating in. But for the military, they are contributing to society in a positive way. They are fighting for their country, whether they're going into combat, whether they're making guns for the army, mm -hmm. whether they're medics for the army. You know, they're contributing in a positive way. Right. They're not... Real quick, uh, we aren't going to do conspiracies right now regarding the military. Just take it at face value. Jeez <laughs> Louise. I'm just saying this from my tinfoil hats. I know, I know, I know. Huh? I didn't even know there's conspiracies about that. But yeah, so yeah, whether you're a medic, etc., that is contributing to society in a positive way. Like I said earlier, OnlyFans and sex work has no purpose at all. The only thing that you're gaining from that is money. Yep. That's it. Mm -hmm. But then is money really is money really that important to you? Do you prioritize money that much? Do you love your currency that much to where you degrade yourself right. online for other men and potentially women to view you mm -hmm. as a mere product? Mm -hmm. I mean, to go as far as trying to defend your profession... Right. Or career in that manner when you know that your soul is greatly weeping mm. from doing this activity. That's how far we're going to go because our mind's the prayer. Yeah, absolutely. And she she made this video five months uh, prior to her debate with Michael Knowles. She asked him the same question. Tell me why. What's the difference between sex work, which you say is objectifying me? I mean, a mechanic, uh, you objectify himself. You know, you're using him as a means to an end. No, I'm not. I'm not using him as a means to an end. Uh, he is performing an edifying duty mm -hmm. right to society and to me we are both benefiting from this uh sex work only fans what exactly am i benefiting from this i'm just simply ejaculating to you for my lower pleasure uh okay i got horny so let me go ahead and think of someone Ooh, jasmine jafar yeah let me go ahead and use her body just to simply please mine oh she needs some money okay yeah that's fine that is in no way edifying. Edifying means moral significance to society, right? There is nothing morally significant about OnlyFans, about sex work at all. It is men literally using a human as a product, as a commodity. There is no other job in the world of which a human uses another human as a means to an end, right? This mechanic is performing a duty, right? You're not simply using him, right? Say, hey, 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 um, go ahead and strip down. I mean, it's kind of gay. Go ahead and... It is gay. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and strip down for me so I can go ahead and uh, be aroused by you. I really can't think of another job of which a human being uses another human being to gratify their lower pleasure. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's just absolutely disgusting. Imagine this. It may seem as though that I'm reiterating my um, point that I just made. Imagine a man say, man, you know what? I'm getting a little bit horny, right? I'm, uh, these feelings are coming. Let me see. Well, I have an OnlyFans subscription. Ooh, Jasmine Jafar. I'm going to use her to gratify myself. And yet for her to have the audacity to say, well, isn't it the same thing as like a lawyer? So the lawyer is using his mind, his brilliant mind to save someone from prison, to prosecute someone, to go to prison. That is objectifying him. What? What? How does that have any moral 
significance or congruence towards sex work. And I hate, like, all these atheists, like, we have to walk them through every yes. single process. Like, Jeez, Louise, I know man. you guys are not that slow to where you cannot process these these arguments. <laughs> like, you understand, or you understand, or you just want to dismiss it because the world is so hard for you. Right. Like, I, just, I don't understand. Why yeah. do we have to walk you through every single argument? Yes. Well, tell me why that's not wrong. Oh, you didn't define that right. You missed uh, three words. Why, right. why, why, why? why? Uh, uh, uh. It's like, sheesh. And I, she even stated yeah. in the video, she... She was saying that um, some arguments hit the wall or something, and because we question why, 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 why do we right. have to explain every single thing to you? Yeah, well, yeah, she was saying that some arguments hit the wall because she's asking why, 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 why. Okay, the reason why is because we need a God, right? Because only, and then she was saying um, she says it's a fallacy she says it's an appeal to authority so if we do not have authority the only authority is ourselves so therefore it is okay for me to r word you because the only authority is myself i could care less about and then someone say well you're gonna go ahead and go to prison okay well what if if the prison a lot of the guys there think that r word thinking that r wording someone is fine so who is right who is wrong if authority is just only subjective for ourselves, see, that's what happens whenever we do not base subjective morality on a God, right? Or I should say morality on a God. Um, it's very sad. I can say it's quite pathetic. Again, it just really mind boggles me, right? That she has the audacity to compare sex work and to a lawyer, compare sex work to a mechanic. There's nothing edifying. There's nothing morally significant about sex work and only fans a man is literally ejaculating for you for his own pleasure and you're receiving money from it and you're fine with it guys the video was 20 minutes long we only responded to about like two points yeah you know yeah i mean yeah jasmine if you see this or if you guys have seen us react to jasmine before y'all are gonna be like yo y'all love her i'm sorry she's just easy picks i'm sorry i mean it's just <laughs> it's like you know it's just no studying it's just okay yeah let's go ahead and shoot it yeah it's, that easy. Yeah, yeah, and there's nothing wrong. Let's say they say, oh, y'all guys seem to be like pointing fingers at her, bullying her. Well, there's nothing wrong with bullying or pointing fingers at someone if in the end it doesn't matter, if in the end it's also I, I say that. Me. What if I say that bullying, is, there's no problem with bullying because that's yeah. my morality. Right. What about? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. It's okay. Guys, there's so much to say in her 20-minute video, um, but this is just the beginning. We kind of wanted to make this short and concise for y'all because we know that since we are quote unquote nobodies as far as the YouTube world, they're not gonna sit throughout the whole thing. So we're gonna have a whole lot more videos to come, especially when it comes to sex work, pornography, perversion, and etc. The Shays podcast will continue to create segmentation around all of this stuff more and more and more. Yep, mm -hmm. yep, yep. Right, guys, I'm gonna close out. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, uh, come back for more. We have many more content and videos to come. And um, see you guys later. Peace.